Deliverer was about deflecting what Gabrielle, what her MO was all about, was, which was always about controlling, you know, Zena's temper in a way, you know, keeping her from being the warrior princess at all times. Well, what is a mountain but just a, a bunch of boulders, right? And, and what is a, a rock but a large grain of sand? And what is a large grain of sand? And you, you see my theory here, no. Before we started developing the third season, uh, Rob and I met and we, we discussed uh, different directions we wanted to go. We knew we were going to do the China episodes uh, and uh, uh, we were looking for challenges and ways that the, the gods could mess with our characters. Show yourself. I know you're there. Ares. You want to move this so we can talk? Oh, I don't know. I kind of like the look of it there. Anytime you watch any kind of a series, a really good villain will never say, I'm a villain. Ares wanted to bring peace to the Earth. Well, okay, I have to kill half the Earth to do it and bring them under my dominion, but with me in control, there will be peace. The cult has been taken care of. I put one of my best men on it. He controls their temple. Without that, they're hardly a threat. Best men, you have a mortal handling this. Not just any mortal, this one is exceptional. This particular episode, uh, Star who is like the very Christ-like kind of charlatan, especially if you see that opening scene where the first time you meet the character, his arms are stretched out over a, 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 a shaft. Hold up! Ah. You're a long way from Britannia. We're taking these men back for trial. Kill us here if you want. My people will never give in to Caesar. <laughs> what does Caesar want with you? He knows I'm recruiting mercenaries to join Bodicea in Britannia. Bodicea's fighting Caesar? If anybody does uh, any reading on uh, Bodicea, uh, I mean, she's a national hero in, in uh, England, uh, you'll find that a lot of the references that were in there are exactly the Bodicea that was in history. Yeah! Bodicea! Caesar himself will rest laurels on my head. The idea that Bodicea being a strong woman and being a warrior woman in her, in her own right, obviously there has to be a past history between her and Xena. I'm in command here, not you. Let's just get that clear right now. This isn't the past. Then stop acting as if it is. Xena actually tried to have Bodicea killed. But now in this story, they've come together, you know, on common ground to fight Caesar. I'm here to help you. No, you're not. You're here because Caesar is here. Because your hatred of him won't allow you to be elsewhere. Xena's obsession with Caesar led her to Britannia to fight him, and she was totally ignoring what was going on in Gabrielle's life. I'm not sure who hates the Romans more, Bodicea or your friend. Xena doesn't hate the Romans, just Caesar. By Craftstar using his charm in Gabrielle, it, it, it enabled him to draw Gabrielle into the dark side. Some people call us a cult. I hate that, but I understand. I mean, the idea of one god, it's a little far-fetched. It's, it's, it's hard for people to believe in something that they can't see or touch or, or hear. Gabrielle kind of glommed onto that end point, and all the propaganda given to her was exactly what you would have heard from any group of Christians. When was the last time you saw love or friendship? You see its effect. And you'll see the effect of our God when he brings his kingdom to earth. As far as Zena, she was totally ignoring what was going on in Gabrielle's life. Zena, um, I was just teaching Crafter how to avoid seasickness. He was telling me about his God. <laughs> it's, a, it's very interesting. I'm sure it is. If she had been in her normal state of mind, she probably would have um, been more cautionary with, with Gabrielle. Are you sure my being here is okay? Our God is open to all. Besides, I want you to see this. The door must be opened. The path of his arrival must be sanctified in blood. Pure blood. Innocent blood. With this slime, we praise Dayhawk, the Dark One. <laughs> Oh! 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 Oh!
Gabrielle losing her blood innocence by killing Meridian was a very important aspect. And I thought that that particular moment in the story and in the through line of Gabrielle's character really needed some impact. I think for 99% of the audience, I led them down one path. Then suddenly, I did a complete right turn on them and threw them off and made them realize, you know what? He, he gave us every clue along the entire way to show us we were wrong and we just didn't get it. We let our own prejudice take us where we wanted to go. And that deals specifically with the cult. Thank you, Gabriel. You were going to help bring Dayhawk into this world. He needed a sacrifice. And not just one of flesh and blood. He wanted your purity, your innocence of evil. And you just gave it to him. This world and all who are on it will be no more. The new kingdom of Dayhawk will rule. And you, Gabrielle, will bring it to us. In The Deliverer, there was a very touchy issue of Gabrielle being impregnated by De Hock, and that we talked a lot about because it potentially then becomes about representation of a character being raped. I know that we wanted to create something that was sort of seductive, and that's where I went, that she was lured into, again, the flames, and um, yeah, so I didn't think of it as a rape at the time. At the end of that episode, Gabrielle had killed somebody, whether you can justify it by or rationalize it by self-defense, it does not matter. In her mind, she killed somebody, and everything changed. Sina. I'm here, Gabrielle. It hurts inside. What? Everything's changed. Everything. But it became not just a pivotal episode in the series because it, it launched the rift, but it also became a very uh, pivotal episode in the controversy that this series could actually create. And we created some controversies as we went along.